Just want to make sure I meet the minimum criteria. <laughs> hey man, you got a pulse and a liver, you'd be alright. So. so guys, welcome back. Another episode of Beers and Stories. We're doing a, a late evening version here. This is a good friend of mine, Michael. Michael, tell everybody hello. Hey, what's going on guys? <laughs> So, I appreciate you being here. He just got back from a very long weekend. If you have a chance, his podcast is called Feed Me, Fuel Me. Really gets your day going right. Uh, he's been working hard there, so thank you for coming by to drain the last bit of brain power you have. Well, it's so, good to be on the other side of the Q&A. So, <laughs> yeah, cool no, I have to come up with all the fun questions on this one. So. Yeah. But yeah, so a little bit of background. I know Michael through the CrossFit world. He's a gym owner here. Um, he started a couple other spin-off groups, one of which is the 20 Percenters. Um, that's a bunch of us we sit, actually, a lot of times at this bar. Um, done some good stuff. I mean, that was, yeah. you, know, you guys got me the commercial building, you know? Like, I was this close to pussing out on that deal, sure. and yeah. I left the Thursday night session and woke up early Friday and pulled the trigger. Here, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's a little more debt, right? Yeah. But, yeah, it worked out well. So. I did want to ask you, so you you were in the military for quite a while. Yeah. A short chapter in my life, just four years. Just four years. Gotcha. Four years active, three years reserve. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And uh, thank you for your service, obviously. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, when, so when did you get out? When, when did 2012. you 2012. Okay, so yeah. you, you got to miss all the bad recession stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I err on the side of ignorance, and it seemed to work out in my favor. Um, <laughs> More often right than not. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, so uh, my story professionally, uh, I got out of school in 2006 okay. with a bachelor's in health and human performance. Mm -hmm. And I was a strength and conditioning coach and a personal trainer in Dallas for during yeah. like the boom. Right, right. As when you, everything as, in Dallas was as, awesome. As you civilians call it. <laughs> and, um, no, so I was I was training at a time of, I mean, to put it shortly, abundance. Sure. I mean, everybody had everything. Money was flowing from the sky. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I was 22, partying my face off. Naturally, most of my clients, I I had either had 22 to 25 year old dudes driving like the sexiest cars on the planet. Yeah. Or the housewives that they would later on inherit. Yeah. Um, you know, who are just yeah. spending, you know, their their husband's hard earned cash as fast as they could. And um, you know, I was I was none of the wiser. I'm very uh, business illiterate at that yeah. point in my life and uh, I think things have changed know, it, was, it was kind of like I was in a situation where mm -hmm. if I asked I received and the, nobody was saying no to anything sure right oh yeah now, 2006 you could get away with yeah. whatever you now I've got this very awkward uh, moral and ethical compass uh, yeah. <laughs> years before that I had gotten kicked out of the Air Force Academy and uh, mm -hmm. still had the itch to serve so as Shit was about to hit the proverbial fan. Sure. Um, I up and joined the Marine Corps. Okay. So um, as, as the world's ending on Wall Street, you're putting on another uniform yeah, and headed and in. I, and I have no idea that any of that is happening. Wow. Um, Do you so, have any idea how lucky you were <laughs> on that decision? Yeah. You well, know, I you know I I came into the Marine Corps on five waivers, and mm -hmm. as I sat down, I've done. Uh, all the boards for ROTC candidates and sure. and officer candidate school candidates. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way in 2018 I would get in the Marine Corps. I just yeah. have too many waivers and yeah. the the pecking order is too high. Sure. Um, but we were at a time where mm -hmm. we were fighting in two theaters. Like everything just worked out. Sure. You know. Um, so I got in, uh, rolled into OCS, uh, January uh, 2008. Oh, and man, you couldn't have timed that better. And I just and I just rode the wave. I mean, yeah. like no, none, nobody, none of the military communities felt that at all. Felt any of that. 
Yeah. Like no, none of us were hurting for anything. You know what I'm saying? No, we, you're. We got our two percent raise year year over year. Yeah. Uh, I got promoted on time. Sure. I wasn't stop loss for any reason. Like nothing. Uncle Sam's check cleared. Yeah. 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 Went, you know. That's good. I went to Afghanistan. I did the thing, and yeah. You know, I came out on the other side as all that shit was yeah. ending. As 12, 12 things were a little bit better, but. And I still didn't know. I still didn't know. Anything about that? So you were like yeah. recession, and oh, I lost my ass four years ago, and I'm like, yeah, doing what? <laughs> you know, like what Any, happened? Because yeah. all, my, all, all my buddies who had their shit together were like investing in these investing in these flop houses. And, sure. You know, and then uh, they killed short, short sailing. And Yo, all that and they stuff. killed it. And uh, so now I got I got buddies now mm. that are cash flowing their fifth, six, seven property. You know, yeah, and man. it's just. Back then, if you had cash on hand, like a lot of my, a yeah. couple of my buddies who were like super smart with money, yeah. Uh, when we got back from Afghanistan with a couple, you know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars in the bank, mm -hmm. that's all you needed. They just, you know, because we had VA status, it was yeah, like man. no cash. Well, I'm coming with the VA, yep, and cash, yeah. You're unstoppable. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah. I mean, I had, a, I had a buddy of mine who went in on three properties right after that. Right after, right after we got back. And I don't really care where he bought them. He did fine. Yuma's flourishing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this was in Yuma. Oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you've got YPG there. You've got all the other stuff. Yeah. I mean, he's not, not he's not hurting for renters by any means. No. Oh my yeah. God. Not in Yuma. So. Wow. But yeah, yeah, that was it. So I moved up to Scottsdale after I got out with the intention of getting into grad school. Uh, somehow, some way, I made it into ASU. Uh, Love it. And uh, opened the gym in 2013. I was out of the Marine Corps 14 mm -hmm. months when I opened the doors to CrossFit PHX. No shit. Mm -hmm. Wow. You don't like to sit still, do you? I'm not very good at it. I know the Even feeling. Even when I try. <laughs> I know the feeling. So. Aren't you supposed to be relaxing? I am. Yeah, I am. I'm not at the gym. Yeah, I am. I am relaxing. <laughs> I'm. I'm not breathing too hard right now. Yeah. Wow. So you came out, and so there were a couple things I actually wanted to, to kind of pick your brain about today. Sure. I had. I had these conversations with a lot of people, mm -hmm. and as you know, I have started kind of at the end of last year. I started coaching sales as well. Right? Yeah. So. You know, God I know, bless you. buddy, it is, <laughs> if your phone's rang in a telemarketer, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. That was my fault. But, you know, one thing I get a lot, because there's all these people, so you had, you come out of the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. you don't even know that the world about ended. Right. Not a clue, honestly. And, yeah, yeah, no idea. It's very real. Yeah, it was bad. I can tell you, I've, I did another one of these uh, with somebody else we both know, Garrett. Yeah. He and I were literally trading stories about how bad did your shit get during the recession, yeah, right? Like, right. what did you have to give up? What did you have to sacrifice? Sure. Like, how scary was that? So one thing I, w I did want to kind of touch on is I deal with a lot of people who are coming up in the investment game. They're okay. trying to get into it, and I am by no means, a, like, I don't really know what I'm talking about, yeah. but these are kids, right? We're all these making are, it up as we go, brother. Yeah, these yeah. are, you know, early 20s, sometimes mm -hmm. even late teens that we sure. get in the call center. Yeah. And then all the way up to people that are in their 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. And I know one thing that I've learned from hanging around you and a few other people is that, you know, you get to a certain point where you kind of, you trust the skills that you've built. Mm -hmm. you, and at some point you say, fuck it, I'm in. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, but the, one of the most paralyzing things I see in, in the real estate investment industry, and I know you've managed to practice some in fitness, is the ability to make a decision mm -hmm. and be comfortable moving forward and not doubt yourself sure. all the time. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you, know, you, were, you had to make some big decisions with the gym, mm -hmm. right? You're about to sign a commercial lease. Yeah. And don't take this the wrong way, but I guarantee you, you read that thing and didn't know what the fuck you were signing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. As you know now, they're a big deal. Yes. Right? They mm -hmm. can they can bite you so like tell me can you tell me a little bit about that experience like you're 14 months out of the core you've been flying airplanes overseas yeah. and now you're sitting in a mall in Scottsdale trying to negotiate with some guy over a piece of property yeah. um so I'm a, a huge believer my my natural inclination is to outsource what I don't know sure which is massive <laughs> um, but uh, 
you know, almost, almost to a fault. Uh, not so much anymore, but back then it was kind of like trust until proven otherwise. Really? Yeah. So um, I just so happened to be uh, have a female associate, I'll call her, um, <laughs> who just so happened to be in the real estate game and helped me find the property. Beautiful. And uh, outsource you know, when for, you don't know. For for better or for worse, um, mm -hmm. she negotiated our first lease at the same space. At the same space. Okay. Wow. And uh, you know, I still couldn't tell you what's in it. I just know that I'm not I, allowed I, to do fitness outside. I can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, when it came time to to do it again, there were a couple mm -hmm. of things that needed to line up for me. Number one, I have a wife and two kids now yep. that I didn't have when I opened the gym. Uh huh. I hear uh, that changes things. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there's definitely uh, another three human beings to consider. Absolutely. You know? Um, so when I opened the gym and then started dating my wife, mm -hmm. I told her that I was three years into my five year plan. Okay. And good, bad, or indifferent, knock it out of the park, kick my dick yeah. in the dirt, doesn't yeah. matter. You know, our relationship cannot be the reason any of that happens. Sure. For better or for worse. Yeah. So give me the next two, right? Very fair. And, uh, and, so she, she, and she signed she, on the line. She, and she bought in. She Man. said, "I do." And here we are. Keeper. And uh, so the first, the first negotiation uh -huh. I had to have was, you know, hey babe, you held up your end. The yeah. lease is up. I I can walk away right here right now sure. knowing that like I did everything I could yeah right no, absolutely here we are you left it on the table yeah and uh, her response was and for I'm sure your audience will this will resonate with uh, <laughs> she looked me dead in my face and said I refuse to live with you working for somebody else no shit do the deal figure out how to get it done ah, beautiful so as I'm looking around uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense to start over. Sure. You know, and if you move two miles in any direction, that's essentially what you're going to end up doing because your yeah. statistics will tell you that you're going to lose roughly 50% of your people. Wow, that many. Who are like either consciously or subconsciously looking for a reason to leave. Sure. You know, now you've created a logical inconvenience that yeah. doesn't constitute renewing their membership sure right so that wasn't really appealing and then as I looked at the yeah. market it's a seller's market right now so there's nothing where the juice is worth the squeeze yeah I'd have to take on I'd have to triple the size of the gym which means I have to do triple the fucking work yeah Can I say the f-bomb on the show yeah all you okay. want <laughs> um, and uh, you know I just wasn't interested in any of that we have a sure. really good thing going at CrossFit PHX where it is right now as sure it stands. so um, at which point seeing the forest for the trees I, I pulled out that lease and I showed it, I showed it to 17 people because one thing my property owner had yeah. made very clear, they weren't interested in negotiating with anybody else on my behalf. Nice. Yeah. So, so they want to go direct that, to you. Yeah, that means That's it. it's like, look, here, you need me to send him a bitch, <laughs> sign him by the line, and now we have you by the balls officially. Huh, funny, I've done that to some of my tenants. Sorry. And, um, <laughs> so in... It's the the lease I have is extremely biased in some Towards. some random dude in Beverly Hills favor. Yeah, um, he's in Santa Monica. Actually. So so the best the best I could do was you know finagle it to be as much in my favor as possible. Of course, right? Repair the AC, patch the roof. Sure. Like, stuff like that that they're kind of obligated yeah. to do anyway but but for some reason I have to negotiate about it yeah and um, welcome to the game my friend yeah so at but at this point I've accumulated enough business acumen that I'm sure. okay playing the waiting game of course you know so if it was up to them right they yeah. can keep me for another five years uh-huh or go through this whole process again, come out of pocket, fixing the place up, blah, sure. blah, blah. 
Because I guarantee I'm not leaving it the way that I found it. No. I don't think any tenant ever does. No, ever. And, um, you know, so hedging my bets on a couple of industry facts at this sure. point. I, mm -hmm. I waited them out, and they, they gave me everything that I needed mm -hmm. to make it worthwhile. Beautiful. So, I appreciate you, sir. Hey, happy to help. I said, that's a, that's a happy place there. My phone doesn't ring in that building. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I'm, I'm willing to put in a little slack. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's really interesting kind of how you, you managed to make that, that decision process. Like one, family first. Yeah. Totally understand that, great move. Kudos to your wife, by the way. <laughs> we had no idea that our fate was in her hands. <laughs> Glad we're nice to her. I try uh, not to show all my cards to everybody. Yeah. Probably a good call. Yeah, but yeah, the you know the interesting part with you, know, you mentioned it with the commercial stuff is that it does it takes a lot more patience. Yeah, right. And I, for one, am still learning patience on a daily basis. Sure. You yeah. might or might not it's be not there as well. Too. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, sometimes it's time to pull the trigger and get mm -hmm. the deal done, and, yeah. and you do have to wait. But yeah, the waiting game with the commercial stuff is, is not easy to do, no. you know? I mean, because it's your baby, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, that's your blood, sweat, tears. Yeah. The other side of it is the lease is over, and by yeah. the letter of my lease, mm -hmm. I started negotiations six months too late. So the ball's in their court. Yeah. They're like, hey, bro, you should have been having these conversations a long time ago. Wow. And uh, luckily for me, mm -hmm. aside from the sushi restaurant two doors down, I'm the longest standing, or I'm sorry, the dry cleaner's on the other side. Yeah, Bill's been there a long time. Yeah, I'm the longest standing tenant in that place. Really? Yeah. So who was in there? Was like, it used you to be an moved? auction house. Really? And it was sitting vacant for like two years. Wow. Yeah. I got into the gym business yeah. after the recession, so that thing. Oh, had you had you had wide open real estate yeah. then. Oh man, yeah, yeah, you fit time that well. They couldn't see it. Uh, <laughs> if, if you listen to my life story, it's on YouTube somewhere. Timing is a uh, a recurring theme for me. Timing is a thing for sure. And it's completely accidental. It's not like I see an opportunity. I'm like, yeah, jump now. <laughs> it's like. Flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. This looks like a good idea. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. that is good of you. I've had some, I've had what we'll call mixed experiences with time. Yeah, I don't have um, strategic timing, if you will. Yeah. My timing is not on purpose most times. Hey, listen, what do they say? It's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> so, all I'll, the time. I will take it every time. Yeah. So, good stuff. So, touching back on kind of one of the other points that I was talking about is decision making ability. Yeah. Right? And yeah. and the ability, you know, it's kind of an art. It is. And you yeah. know you do I know like I've listened to a lot of Feed Me Feel Me episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're great. There's some really good gold nuggets in there for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely, you know, I should have listened to you a little more before I started. This is this is work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Completely. I'm like, man, I had no idea what yeah. I got talked into. Everything but, that happens on the other side of that thing, like that's that's where the work yeah. happens. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I I'm in large personal debt to someone over that. But the the, the ability to make decisions, sure. right? And you guys yeah. have talked about this a lot on the podcast mm -hmm. and, and with other people, just in the business world in yeah. general. Yeah. Um, you know, anytime you're dealing with you, know, you had a lease or you're buying your house or you know I have property or anybody else has had on the show, yeah. you got to make big decisions about lots of money. Mm -hmm. There's typically a deadline, right? Right, mm -hmm. and it's paralyzing to a lot of people, sure. me included, right? right? And I've gotten better about it, mm -hmm. but like, I mean, what is what have you learned on your journey, or who have you talked to that really kind of helped uh, you along, dude? Uh, you know, feed me, feel me is a very selfish endeavor on my part. On my part, uh, from the standpoint that I get to ask all the questions I want to ask to a lot of kick-ass people. Sure. And um, so that has been very um, enlightening. Mm -hmm. In in that the those paralyzing circumstances. Yeah. Doesn't matter what game you're playing. Yeah. They happen to everybody, so nobody's immune to it. Really? Yeah. And like uh, even at the, you've interviewed some pretty high-level folks, well, right? I had like, a conversation. I had a conversation. Like, what is this? Tom Bill, you? Yeah. Right. I mean, what's Quest worth? A lot. Yeah. And uh, he 
he quit. So when was that, this? Tom, Tom Billy's got a really interesting story, and I'm probably gonna butcher it, but go back and listen to his episode on Feed Me, Feel Me. Oh, was that when he was at he the walked, tech company he walked, and he walked out? He walked away. Yeah. Yeah. He said, wow. "Fuck it, I'm I'm out." Right. So. You know, but like the the common theme in that decision making <laughs> thing is your conviction has to be greater than the fear, right? Knowing your that, conviction has to be got it. That makes sense. You know, Very much right? so. So, perfect example. You in this com- this commercial spot. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> uh, I remember sitting down with you. And you were like, ah, I don't, yeah. and you just hemming yeah. and hawing about it. And uh, I was like, well, how much do you stand to make on this deal? And like, how sure a thing mm-hmm. is it? You know? Because like, you doing the work, I'm not worried about. It. Yeah. yeah. You're, that's, that's not the scary part for you. No, right? the, the work it's, it's, it's the, the abundance flash in the pan. Yeah. of debt that you're going to get on the front end that's like the kick in the nuts, right? Yeah, man, signing those papers yeah. is scary. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just need that outside-in perspective. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my nuts on the line right now. Yeah. But, you know, if I was playing your game and I had mm-hmm. that same opportunity, there's nothing, I would not hesitate to pull the trigger on that. Yeah. Right? And I, I'm pretty sure in a very roundabout way it's kind of verbatim what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely remember. I mean, we were literally, we were outside at that table, right yeah. out right out here and talking to everybody. And, and that, that's, uh, that's sometimes that's all you need is that reassurance sure. that, yes, it is a good idea. Because yeah. if it was a horrible idea, you'd have got that information as well. Yeah. And like, that, bro, that's, juice nut would squeeze, wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I would consider myself an all, chips all in kind of guy. Mm-hmm. You know, so if I'm pulling my yeah. chips off the table, you should probably pull your chips off. Yeah. yeah. We call them crimes of enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. They can they can really fuck you up. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, that's um oh. you know, that that's 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 kind of that's what it has to be, right? Cuz it's you're, uh, you're like you said you're playing with a lot of money, but at yeah. the same time, and I just had this conversation with uh uh Caitlin the other day. Like yeah. what kind of problems do you want? Yeah, right? Like, we're, we're in a space, very fortunately, that mm-hmm. the problems that we have are the problems that are of our own creation. Very right? much so. Like, yeah. I cause my headaches. Yeah. I can't blame my bullshit on anybody else. Sure. Right? And as I was explaining to Caitlin in one mm-hmm. of our mentoring sessions, yeah. uh, you know, what kind of problems do you want? Do you want $30,000 problems? Yeah. Or do you want nine-figure problems? Yeah. Because you guess what? You're gonna get bullshit anyway. Yeah. So you might as well make it worth your while. <laughs> Look, I love it so much. But he he put it this way. He goes, listen. We were doing. I think he got on the subject of money. Yeah. He's like, listen. Warren Buffett has money problems, mm-hmm. and the bum down at Quickie Mart has money problems. Right. They're different money problems. Right. But they still happen. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, and you you read that and all of that kind of stuff, but. When it comes like the rubber meeting the road, because you've, you've been there, right? Sometimes with your own shit, you're not nearly as objective, yeah. right? Because you've justified it in your head mm-hmm. so many different ways. Like, yeah, am I am I just crazy? Sure, possible. And probably you are. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. guess what? I don't see anybody else with that deal sitting in front of them. No. So that already puts you in the minority. So just get used to being alone. Right? Yeah. And, but I think the difference between you and I in the way that we've come up in, in entrepreneurship and, and making these decisions, mm-hmm. I was in a very unfortunate but fortunate position to do a lot of shit by myself. I didn't yeah. have anybody telling me that, I didn't have anybody telling me I was crazy. I didn't have anybody sure. tell, talking me off the, off the ledge. I didn't have, I wasn't mm-hmm. beholden to anybody. You know, so you could just so, do it. So I could just run out of ways to mess it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. And that's a very terrifying mm-hmm. but awesome place to be. Sure. Because there's there's nothing, there's nobody telling you it's impossible. Yeah. There's nobody telling you that it won't work. There's nobody telling you there's a better way. No that's shit. The, that's the part that sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, there's nobody telling you not to do it either. 
Yeah. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, you're, so like when you're I started literally the gym, just out there. When I started the gym, I knew yeah. everything there was to know about fitness. Sure. I didn't know shit about the back end. Yeah. You know, like I have an MBA's worth of, of education <laughs> now. Yeah, right? from the school of hard by, knocks. By nurturing this baby that is CrossFit PHX. Sure. You know, my strength, my strong suit has always been though mm, uh, connecting. Sure. And and creating networks. Yeah. You know, and what I found in the fitness business, mm -hmm. you know, not to get too far off topic, is that movers and shapers, mm -hmm. by and large, fitness is one of their core tenets, right? So if you want to get yeah. if you want to get next to somebody who is making massive decisions, yeah, you know what I mean. It's almost you, like a side can, door you, to get, to get you, there. You can find them in the gym. Sure. Because just like the military, like mm -hmm. if I want to get my finger on the pulse of some kind of policy on base, yeah, right. Guess what? The general's in there at zero five. Is he now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't have to go through the adjutant, his secretary, uh -huh. and the XO. I can just go ask him a question. Yeah. With zero negative repercussions. That's I'm incredible. just some idiot lieutenant. Yeah. Who's curious? Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. And the same. And the so same, that and you're talking about at the gym on base to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. And and the same the same thing holds true mm -hmm. out here in the civilian world. Yeah. Right. If if you want some counsel, right? Chances are you can find it in the gym. Wow. You know. And no, I I know that now. You definitely <laughs> realized that before I did. No. <laughs> There's you know, no doubt like there. There's, there's, there's no shortage of member. Wow. There's no shortage of mentorship mm -hmm. and people that that are playing this game. Sure. Right. Are like looking for somebody to give it away to. Yeah. Right. Because people that play up here, right, have figured out the abundance thing. Sure. Right. Because if I'm hedging my bets mm -hmm. on my coaches. Anybody that I've mentored along the way, sure. and you've been there for a lot of them. Yeah. Right? The odds of them mm -hmm. replicating what I've done out there on their own without me, without the perfect storm that, sure. that I had, yeah. is almost fucking zero. It's not, it's nothing. So, yeah. why would I withhold any of that? Right? No, that's a that, that's a that's, great concept. That's 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 the abundance mentality. Like sure. If, if you wanted to approach abundance from a scarcity mindset, that's it. Yeah. What are the chances of you doing what I've done? Goose egg. Yeah. I'm gonna give it all to you. Yeah. And if you do go out and do what I've done, good, good for job. you. Yeah. Good job. Because guess what? Yeah. On the back on the back mm -hmm. end, you're in my coaching team. Sure. That only helps me. Absolutely. It's, you know it's, what I mean? Yeah. And well, I, I've accomplished all that I've accomplished in strength and conditioning, and yeah. I still talk about Alan Hedrick, yeah. my strength and conditioning coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, who I still have the mm -hmm. awesome opportunity to go back and check in with because of Facebook and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. How's he doing? Hey, he's great. He fucking won a national championship at CSU Pueblo not too long ago. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Good so, for him. Um, but, yeah, there's... Wow. And this is, and I think the decision making thing wrap, tying this all up yeah. comes from the inability, the inexperience, or the lack of confidence to look ignorant and simply ask a question. Because so much of that anxiety goes away with that mm -hmm. confirmation or declination. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. For, that cause, makes cause, that cause, makes a lot of sense. If I'm gonna go play the real estate game, mm -hmm. right? And I come to you with a potential deal. Sure. You know, and you, look, holy shit. You know, if your eyes light up and you know you have yeah. that twinkle in your eye, like I might want to do this. Yeah. We're right. Good. We're good. Hey, all systems go. Yeah. But if you look at that thing and start, you know, start looking for your lighter, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's that's all I need to know. Sure. Right. The anxiety goes away. The decisions made, and I can move on with my life. Yeah. And, so it's it's, but the, it's it's the faith in others' abilities. In other words, you, because yeah. like you said, I mean, you you've got a great network, right? I mean, I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. It's been wonderful. Um, 
but being able to trust somebody else mm -hmm. with no other agenda. Seeking good counsel. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's really what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. I like I like that. Because when you when you've got the right person in your court, mm -hmm. you know, and there's there's no like, I you know, I have very little to gain or lose if yeah. if PHX takes off or whatever else right. and same thing with you, you know, I mean I don't know, like I say, if I hit it really big, I'm just going to run around and annoy all my friends with jobs all day. <laughs> hey, it's Tuesday, let's go see a movie. Right. What? Yeah, come on, it's 2.30. Mm -hmm. I'm done with my workout. Right. But the, you know, the ability, that, that decision-making thing, I see it a lot. It is paralyzing. Absolutely. Absolutely, Absolutely paralyzing. And it's interesting to know that that happens at, at kind of all levels in, well, in you business. Know, and, you, you get to a point, right, mm -hmm. where... You know the the people who don't run in your circles, like yeah, put you on a pedestal, right? Yeah. Or at least you like to think so. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So God forbid mm -hmm. you admit that you don't know. Yeah. Guess who gives a shit? Only you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's it's, it's an ego thing. Very very much so. You know? Yeah. Like, I I I, I have been fortunate enough and eaten enough humble pie to with regards to business decisions mm -hmm. transcend my ego like yeah. I just don't how long did that take years because I'm an idiot <laughs> uh, you know that whole running out of ways to fuck it up thing yeah yeah like that process is a lot shorter if you just ask yeah for sure <laughs> you know what I mean yeah probably not a good idea, man. Yeah. You should probably have this system in yeah, place. Why should... haven't you hired that person? Yeah. Why you don't you know? don't do that? Yeah. You know? And that's and that's wow. you know the, the the other part of that is actively seeking mentorship. Sure. You know, I have uh, I always have a coach. And they always yeah. fulfill a specific purpose. And when that purpose has been met, or you know, I'm in a place where I can take the training wheels off, mm -hmm. it's no longer a business relationship. It, we, you know, along the way, the good ones, you know, you'll be able to cultivate a friendship around that. Absolutely. You know, and now, uh, so I spent the last six months learning all the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, since I opened the gym, yeah. John Keogh has been like, dude, <laughs> know the books. I'm like, John, John I'm going to be out here on the floor. He's like, <laughs> take Biggie books yet? I'm coaching all these classes. Yeah. Looked at the books yet? Fuck. Right? <laughs> so, so then I hired a coach, and we spent oh. we spent the last six months overhauling, finding yeah. all the leaking cash, sure, uh, putting a plan together, and wow. now, like from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. the gym's in the best place it's ever fucking been, right? Sure. And we are positioned the hockey stick in 2019, right? Yeah. In preparation for that hockey stick, now that I have the books, I don't have that coach anymore. Yeah. Now I have an. Uh, an organizational leadership coach sure who interviewed all the coaches to make sure that I have wow all the right people on the bus uh-huh and it gives me a solid assessment as to who needs to get off the bus sure should that be the case mm -hmm. and are they playing the right role and are they on board with the mission yeah wow right what does and, something like that cost? Let me ask you. So I spend, I, I budget $1,000 a month on coaching. That's it? It's $12,000 a year. Yeah. And you're going to get that back fivefold. Yeah. Or fire your coach. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear you say that because, I mean, it's, you know, I've, I've had some other people on the show that have, that have mentioned the same thing where, mm -hmm. you know, you don't. Like the superpower is admitting that you don't know it all. Yeah. And I don't know why. I mean, I'm very <laughs> open about like I fucked up a lot of deals. Yeah. Sure. My first real estate deal in Phoenix, I worked for three and a half months. Mm -hmm. I risked I don't know 160 thousand dollars. I made just under 10 grand. Dude, I'd be better <laughs> off making lattes at Starbucks. Yeah. Literally mm -hmm. more money and no yeah. risk. Sure. Right. I had right. maybe got like my finger burnt on the mm -hmm. coffee machine. Yeah. That was it. But well, that doesn't light your fire. No. Oh my God. I got all my tools stolen. It was super shitty. Yeah. But, um, you know, kind of the, like the coaching and the having the mentorship and the accountability does, does make a lot of sense because I get, you know, I, I have people in my world that are, that are bright and that are talented. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what you mentioned earlier about, you know, I see some of them and it's like, man, 
you can do this. Yeah. You just gotta put in the fucking work. Yeah. You gotta put in the work, mm -hmm. right? And you know, one other thing I did want, because you you coached a lot of different people, right? Yeah. In the personal fitness space, a lot of different ways. A lot yeah. of different ways, but you know, there's. I see this happen is that you've got someone with a ton of raw talent, mm -hmm. but they're fucking lazy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I, I I don't know what it is. I guess mm -hmm. maybe I'm not that smart, but you know, I, I see this in the investment world is they have the raw talent mm -hmm. and they're literally they're scared of doing the work. Yeah. Right? They're like, mm -hmm. oh but what if it's hard? There's this preconceived notion that if I do Life, life isn't paint by numbers anymore. Sure. You know, we don't live in an age where you get a high school diploma gets you this much annual income. Yeah. A bachelor's equates to, like, it used to be like that. Yeah, you know it was fairly mean? predictable. Like, I know if I have a bachelor's, I'll be able to make at least 50K. Sure. Right? If I get a master's, I'll be able to make at least 80K. Like, mm -hmm. it used to be very mathematical. Very cut and dry. Right? Not so much anymore. Sure. The masters is the new bachelors. Yeah. Because nobody's making money. The bachelors is a fucking high school degree. Yeah. High school I know. diploma. I you have one. I mean? It wasn't doing well. And uh, you know, so I mean that that's just the reality of society now. Sure. Right? And if you're not willing to move at the speed of information, right? Mm. You have fifth graders calling bullshit on their teachers yeah. because of Google. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's not information anymore. It's what sure. you do with that shit. Every, yeah. Everybody, by virtue of this thing, yeah. has the keys to the city. Sure. You know what I mean? You can I find anyone. I, I want to know where to put my money in the market. Google yeah. it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I want to know what area of town is hottest for in terms of real estate investment. Google it. Google it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It pops like, right up. There's, you know, it just, it, again, it comes down to what game you want to play. Now, sure. Once you decide the game you want to play, yeah. Now you need to now you need to know the rules. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much the rules of how to play the game; it's what you're what you can't do. Yes. That's what you need to know. Yeah. Right. right? What's gonna get me put in jail? Anything <laughs> south of that? Right. Let's fuck around. Yeah. You for know what sure. I'm saying? You know, I love it. Obviously, in the most ethical sense possible. Sure. But you know, like that—that's—that's that's the, the thing. And what I see, mm -hmm. a lot of these these talented individuals, yeah. where they get stuck, is like, oh shit. You mean I still have learning to do? Right. That is a very real awakening. Yeah. But you are always a student. Yeah. I've been in fitness. <laughs> Marsh would be 20 fucking years. Whoa. If I was in the Marine Corps, I'd be retiring. <laughs> All right? That's how long I've been in fitness. Yeah. And I'm still learning. learning. Every day. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I've been brick and mortar in business. I've been yeah. doing the entrepreneur thing for about 10 years. Okay. Right? What you see at CrossFit PHX started in the back of my truck. Okay. So all in, all in mm -hmm. I've been doing the entrepreneur thing for ten years. Yeah. Ish. Uh huh. Uh, been brick and mortar for six. Sure. Right. And I'm still learning every day. Right. Wow. And it. I'm, so you just have to be humble enough to get out of your own way and just ask the question. So what is that? And then I love that point. Like, so you're here. You know, it takes, and I, you are, I'm gonna go ahead and put it like, you've got the alpha male thing going on. I have some alpha tendencies, right? Cu couple of them. A scotch, but, as they just, say. Just a scotch, <laughs> a splash, if you will. But where does, where does it come in? Because I know it was difficult for me. Like, tell me a little bit about, like, that ego dissolving process, right? And also, like, one of the things that I really give to the Marine Corps is... Mm -hmm. I have one more. I, Thank um, you. I didn't get... I got some very high-level guidance for very minimal investment. Really? Was that from the, just, the people just, you served under? No, or? just the way the Marine Corps, the construct of the Marine Corps. Okay. Right? So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. The Marine Corps proved to me 
that the human mm -hmm. being is capable of learning anything. That's quite and I'm about, I'm about I'm about to prove a very massive point to you. Okay, my entire professional education mm -hmm. up until the Marine Corps mm -hmm. was in slanging weights and writing fitness regimens. Okay, sure. I'm an FAA certified air traffic controller. Wow. The Marine Corps Air Traffic Control School is uh -huh. four months long. Four months? That civilian curriculum that I accomplished in four yeah. is 12 months. What? Yes. And you do it in the core in four? Yeah. So one third of the time? Correct. Same amount of information. No I could have left air traffic control school in Pensacola yeah. and signed on with any civilian airport that would have me. In a third of the time? In a third of the time. Yeah. So that, that, was, that was number one. Yeah, like that you. In other words, you can do it. Like you, given the right amount of time, and as we say, what's the line from the movie? Geology is the study of pressure and time. That's it. Right. You know. So given the right amount of pressure and time, mm -hmm. you're able to accomplish that. You just need the right incentive. Yeah. You know? So, so then the other okay. the other part of that is on the officer side. Mm -hmm. Our perspective of Marine Corps operations is yeah. a thirty thousand foot view. Right. I love this it, already. It, it's not kicking in the door. Okay. That's, that's that's tactics. That's for the movies. We're strategy. Got it. Does that make sense? That's, it does. That's the hierarchy. Sure. Right. The tactics are the nuts and bolts. Uh huh. Strategy is the machine. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So my job is to make sure that the machine is running. Okay. Love it. I don't need to turn a fucking wrench. I don't need to know what a fan belt is. Yeah. None of that. You need right? you need that to run. It's, exactly. So in that, the most important lesson I learned was it's not about knowing the answer. Okay? If you spend enough time trying to know all the answers, opportunity will pass you by. Because you're here. Yeah. When you should be here. You're no longer big picture about shit. Sure. Right? So, mm -hmm. in that, when I'm giving a command brief about air traffic control operations, you yeah. know, we're gonna do this, that, and the other thing, and they mm -hmm. say, where are you gonna put the radar? Let me defer to my subject matter expert. Staff Sergeant, yeah. come tell this colonel. You radar uh, expert, yeah. be an expert. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's it. Small unit leadership, know your fucking job. And my job is to know yeah. that you know your fucking job. And that's so damn key. And, and trust you sure. to know it. Hold you that's accountable incredible. to that standard. Yeah. Right? So now I can focus on the shit that I need to focus on to make sure that this machine is running. Yeah. So I you, can't come down and turn the wrench for you. No, because then you're not, because because not you doing can't, your job. You're not, you can't do my job. Sure. And I'm sure as shit not qualified to do yours. <laughs> So God, that's incredible, and that's it. Yeah, you know, it's it's very it's very simplistic that way. Man, that's that's incredible. You had that experience because we have you know in the real estate world we talk about team building all the time, mm -hmm. right? Like I can't do what I do in a vacuum, right? Yeah, I most have, of you assholes don't play well with others. That's the problem. It is seriously, <laughs> right? We're back to the type A thing, right? Because we want to give orders and be listened to. Yeah, but the. You know the team building thing. I mean, like I have a CPA. Mm -hmm. I trust. There's two of them. I trust them implicitly. Yep. I, if I get a nasty gram from the government, which has happened, yep. you guys are nice. It's fine. <laughs> um, if I get a government nasty gram mm -hmm. about some tax, yeah, send it to them. Mm -hmm. But there's so that concept. You know, in in my world, right? I've, I've never served. I was fortunate enough to have granddad in the Marines and dad in the Army, and you probably picked up like I. I spent a lot of time around Granddad. It rubs off a little he bit. He rubbed off a little. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I tell time funny, as a lot of my friends say. <laughs> but the, the, the that process by which people build teams and they put systems in place, mm -hmm. no one ever teaches that. No. Right? And you have to, that's, I mean, obviously. Leadership schools don't teach that. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy how that works because it's so incredibly vital. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what you I mean, any type of organization that has to get X, Y, or Z done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can't function without it. Yes. I mean, I've got uh, 
been made very aware in terms of like, what, what really matters in my organization at this point. Sure. And uh, where I thought uh, I was doing a good job as a leader, because mm -hmm. everything in the Marine Corps has a manual. Sure. But, but over here, I'm writing the manual. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of the deal that I haven't written yet. Really? So when I tell whoever, just do it, they're like, where are my left and right lateral limits? Yeah. Like, just what am work. I not allowed to do? Sure. You know what I mean? What's going to get me put in jail? Can I spend all the money? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, sure. Well, obviously fucking not. They're like, well, yeah. you didn't tell me I couldn't, right? Yeah. So, sure. That's, that's the difference. Okay. Right. Is. We're all just figuring this shit out out here, man. Yeah. Everybody's writing the manual. Are they? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that tells you different is a fucking liar. All right? <laughs> Nobody has this thing figured out. We're all making it up as we go. Really? Yeah. I'm all set, thank you. And that's, that's interesting that you say it. I mean, I, I talk to guys who are, are high up in my game, mm -hmm. and like I, I distinctly remember sitting down with some guys and telling them, you know, my my vision and my business model for the properties that I have, and their heads popping off. They're like, mm -hmm. how did you figure that out? Yeah. But I've had the same conversation with them two minutes before because mm -hmm. they have some system, something that's just kicking my ass, right? right? Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, just do that. And I went, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I, I should have thought of that mm -hmm. or, or whatever, but yeah. the, you know, the, the lesson or I guess kind of what I'm taking away from this is that you know the give and take and the flow of information is good yeah but like I said I mean the, the humble thing is is for me it's been very difficult to learn yeah right uh, sounds like you've had your bumps in the road too and uh, more than a couple yeah, yeah. you know and I, I see that with a lot of the, the younger guys that I work with are you know I mean we're talking guys that are just getting their feet wet in the game yeah you know how do I do this? What do I do this? What do I do if something goes wrong? Like, sure. Dude, figure the fuck out. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's not a good answer. No, it's not a good answer. Yeah. But it, I mean, at the end, now, if there, see, that's the thing, right? The manual, going back to the manual thing. Uh huh. Right? Shit hits fan in the Marine Corps. Page 12, paragraph 3, section 8, problem solved. Right? Really? It's that detailed. Do that? Can I? Yeah. Me personally, yes. The people that are on that's my team, like, yeah, as an organization, can you do that? No. No. Yeah. But I they can get to me. I can't. I can't do that. But you're not always gonna be there, bro. No. And that's the thing. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. Oh, right? trust me. I've that, I've thought that, about it. That is, when you become the limiting factor of your organization, you're fucking up. Hmm. Can't say that's the happiest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> you know, but yeah. So it, it's not. Did, a, it's not about talk? you. Did you figure that out, or did you hear that from somebody? Uh, or both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I can um, see. I mean, the company I know you keep. I could see that popping up at some point. So, um, it's not about building it so that you can leave. Mm -hmm. It's about building it so it doesn't need you. Those are two totally different things. Okay, very right. much so. And you need a fucking manual to do that. Yeah. Ha, huh. right? Mm -hmm. so many there's there's certain things at the gym, you know what I mean? Sure. That people come to me about, and I'm like, number one, who else did you ask? Number two, mm -hmm. like, there is a manual for that. Like, that <laughs> that exists, right? There, there's not a lot of things that aren't written down at this point. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, there's not enough written down. Correct. Right? And that's that's the deal. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this. Yeah. And you do what you do, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that there there are really sharp people out there who figured out some really cool mm -hmm. shit. I'm I learn from them every day. Yeah. But the act of putting all this down is difficult. That's the work. Yeah, and there isn't a manual for that that I found yet. <laughs> I looked. I googled it, by yeah. the way, yeah. and it's not there. You know, you you find you can tell somebody's where somebody's at in their life path, let alone their business path, mm -hmm. when 
and you can tell whether or not they're trying to recreate the wheel. Yeah, right. That's a good analogy, though. If if you're trying if you're trying to do it all from scratch, why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's dumb. That's a whole yeah. lot of work that doesn't need to be done. Yeah. Right? And that's that's your ego telling you sure. that it can't be yours if you don't create it. How long did you stay in that wheel or in that path? It took me a long time at the gym to give up programming. It took me a long time at the gym to not coach all the classes. It took me a long time at the gym to stop mopping the fucking floors. It yeah. took me a long time at the gym to stop doing a lot of things. So yeah. I was doing tactical shit when I'm the only one qualified yeah. to do the strategy shit, right? I remember leaving a bank meeting to go paint a wall. Yeah. That's fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, don't like, I literally, I, I was in a boardroom at a bank, right up on Scottsdale yeah. Road, slightly north of Shea, we won't name any names, <laughs> in a boardroom, like, yeah. running numbers, spreadsheets, everything, I'm like, mm. are we good? They said, yeah, you know, we get the deal yeah. done, whatever. I said, cool, I gotta go pay. Yeah. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, there's, no. a, there's a certain part of the deal where you have to wear a lot of hats sure. until you don't have to. Yeah. But you also have to be prepared to surrender those hats to somebody else. Yeah. Right? That's a step in the right direction. For sure. That's not that's not a concession of yeah. your masculinity or your prowess as a business owner. Yeah. That means you're doing it right. Sure. You know what I mean? What the fuck do I look like now? Yeah. Mopping the floors and dusting barbells. That's not a good yeah. look. Not not a great look. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a very telltale sign of the health of my business. Sure. Right? Like it or not, you can have all the pride you want yeah. in, in those things. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you really like doing, yeah. you get, you're giving something else up. And there mm -hmm. better be somebody more qualified than you doing the other shit. Getting the other shit done. Right? Yeah. And that's the stuff people don't like. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, it's just part of the deal, man. You know what I mean? Like, for sure. Every once in a while, you gotta come back down and get your hands dirty and do all that stuff. But like, it shouldn't be Absolutely. from a place of necessity. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, that's it's, what I was gonna ask, kind of, to, to to wrap a little bit of this up. Like, yeah. I don't know how you are. You know, I've I have always taken a lot of pride in being able to do things with my hands. Sure. Right. So yeah. like, you've been to my house, you've mm -hmm. seen all the stuff I do, what yeah. have you. But you know, one thing that I'm I'm starting to the point like. I do take, there is a certain amount of, you know, personal pleasure in executing a simple task with my hands well yep. in a non-distracted environment, mm -hmm. right? That, that, well, that, that part I, I do enjoy, yeah. you know, I mean, it's simple because I still like the thing that's probably my ego, but like, nobody's going to do it exactly, They'll, that part never goes away. Yeah. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's what I was going to ask is, so like, uh... 80% rule always applies, man. And it, yeah. the 80% rule, let's be very clear, is very perception based. At least 80%, probably on. Okay. So in my mind's eye, uh -huh. what I'd like to tell myself to satisfy my ego, sure, right? Will it be done at least 80% as good as I would do? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. The reality of the situation is, for where I sit now and the things that I truly need to be focused on, yeah. It's better than I could do. Yeah. So I fucking win. I still struggle with it constantly. Right? It's tough. Yes. As you continue yeah. to evolve in business, like that, that will always be the elephant in the room. Yeah. You know, but you, as, lo as long as you can acknowledge, acknowledge that it's there, yeah. you can start making decisions. Yeah. If you act like it's not, then we have a problem. You're going to be the one mopping the floors and painting the walls. Mm. Yeah. That's not where you need to be, bro. No, I'm over, I'm kind of over the, the paint thing. You no. know what I mean? So, hmm. I mean, for whoever, whoever's listening, I hope they got value out of this conversation because I, yeah. I, I think that it's it's a conversation that not many people have access to. Sure. No, and I, I like I said, I appreciate you being here. I know it's, uh, I know you've had a long weekend, but this one, this one's good and I mean, it, Frankly, shit, man. Like, it helps me out, and if I can paint a few less walls, this year. <laughs> dude, it's all, it's all yeah. part of the plan, man. It's all part of the growth, for you sure. Know what I'm saying, like you, if you're, 
even if you are still painting the walls, man. If you're if you're in the same place in year five that you were in year one, you go. Something went wrong along the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For but if sure. there's growth in other areas and that's that's yeah. the headache that you have, chances are you're still in a good spot. Yeah, we're we're gonna be okay. So, so. We, we are we will forever and always in this mm. game be our worst our worst critic. Yeah. And that's that's the other part of that outside perspective. Very it's true. like hey, pick your fucking head up, yeah. take a look behind you and see how much ground you've actually covered. Yeah. You're you're doing okay. Yeah. And you're not completing you're not completely shit in the bed. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I remember telling in the recession when I was just fighting for my life basically. Yeah. My dad had called me up and he'd always ask me how I was doing. Mm -hmm. I said I'm not bankrupt, I'm not in jail, and I don't know what else you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, things are things are a little better. Sure. But I do, I, I appreciate you coming by. This was this is good to do. I know oh, you've had a long weekend. Yeah, it's you all know, good, man. You gotta get some sleep. It's good, it's good to be the A in Q and A for once. Good. Yeah. You know, you're pretty good at it for the record. <laughs> we might have to do this again. You never Anytime, know. Man. Anytime. It's outstanding. So we were. Well guys, thank you for watching again. Beers and stories. Hope it helped. Throw us up a comment or two, questions, etc. Go check out Michael. Uh, I'll put some links in the uh, in the video here. Feed the fuel me. And again, thank you for being here, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. Always. Be good. Later.